Hey everyone, welcome back to the tent. So things are starting to come, come together here with the uh, diamond turning lathe. And now it's time to start taking a closer look at each of the components and how everything works and how it's designed. So I know I just posted yesterday a video of the x-axis, uh, or the at least the bearings for the x-axis working for the first time. But today we're gonna to be taking a look at the z-axis. Uh, which is what you can see here. As you can see, the whole machine uh, machine base, which is this surface plate, is now up on the uh, vibration isolation table, so it's nice and squishy and floating off the off the floor. But anyways, I just wanted to real quick go over the z-axis and show off how it works because there's some kind of neat uh, neat features to it, and it just now is is working. So. First, we'll, we'll take off the, the dust cover here. And right off the bat, you can see why we had a dust cover. There's the Heidenhain LIP 382. Pretty much the most, one of the most accurate glass scales you can get. Um, in theory, resolution down to, you know, a fraction of, of an angstrom. But right now, in the software, we're interpolating it 16x, which is getting us two nanometer feedback resolution. But anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. The stage itself here is a uh, old air bearing slide uh, that Seagate made. Um, not in production, as far as I'm aware. Uh, we just grabbed it at PI this summer. Uh, they were getting rid of it. Um, but let's see if we can get a good look at what's going on here. There are three ceramic air bearing pads right there, and that's what's doing the you know the bearing, uh, which makes sense. So this this little rail in here is is constraining it in that direction, and then you've got these two two pads constraining it in the up and down, and moves back and forth that way. So it's an aluminum construction with ceramic bearing pads like that. They're just uh, orifice compensated. Uh, and this is a very stiff design, uh, but as it as it came, or as we got it, it was just that. Uh, just the stage that moved back and forth. There was no sort of drive, no sort of feedback. So that's kind of the neat part here that we added. We'll look at it now. So here is the drive for the Z-axis. Um, and it's a really neat friction drive bar system. So if I peek in here, you can really quickly get the idea of what's going on. We have just a brushed DC motor uh, of, a, of a decent quality, but it's still a brushed DC motor um, off of an old slide that we've got mounted up here. And there's a V roller ground in place on the motor's own bearings. On the other side, just another simple ball bearing, radial bar, ball bearing like that. Down at the bottom, a little notch flexure, and then this bolt here, and inside this little can, you can sort of see them peeking out there, there's a bunch of springs. So this bearing is tightly preloaded, pinching this bar against that roller there. So that roller is hardened, hardened 01 at 50 something Rockwell. This shaft here is case hardened uh, linear shafting. So up near 60 Rockwell. And the bearing's obviously quite hard as well. So what this all means is a very uh, tight and not backlashy uh, drive system. As this motor turns, it very accurately translates any little motion of this motor directly into linear motion of the stage. And because we're using direct linear feedback from a glass scale, we don't really care about the tolerance as far as the diameter of the, uh, of the roller there. As you can imagine, if we were to just have, you know, say a 
super fancy like two million count encoder uh, rotary encoder on the motor that would be all fine and well but if we didn't know the diameter of that roller on the contact line to with an extreme precision then we still wouldn't be able to realize any amount of translational accuracy for the stage but because we're just measuring the direct displacement as long as we get that roller close to the design diameter we don't exactly care how much uh, or what what is the diameter of of contact on there so that's how it's tran uh, transferring the the motion into the stage but there's one other consideration there where if we had this drive bar directly mounted to uh, this say we just had this uh, you know shrink shrink fit into a little flange that bolted onto here that would not be good at all the whole beauty about this stage is it provides very smooth and straight motion you know kind of important for diamond turning machines and if we have a fixed stiff rigid lever arm coming off the back that we're pushing on you know and make no mistake it's not like this is running out because as i said it's it's ground on its own bearings but the bearings in this and this motor as a whole there's still lots of error motion associated with that i mean this is not this is not a high precision spindle so you're still going to have you know maybe even a micron or a few microns of of error motion at this roller so if that that roller is moving around as it rotates it's pushing this bar around right and you've got this big old lever arm here so all of the rumble and air motion from that motor is just going to translate into this the whole stage tilting and moving around and that's not exactly good for uh, straight motion kind of defeats the purpose there so what we've done is we've got this non-influencing uh, wobble pin sort of situation going on here and you can't really see what's in there very well but I've, I've got it here on the computer and inside of that brass cap this is basically what we've got where there is a here's here's the shaft the orange orange guy here it's it's a uh, screwed on affixed to this Again, hardened O1 part, the dark blue piece here. There's the aluminum flange, which bolts to the stage. And in that, there is a press fit, another hardened O1 insert. And in the middle, a silicon nitride ball. So finally, we have the threaded brass ring and here, just a little silicone O-ring to preload the whole system. So we tighten this up, it squishes down that o-ring and presses the ball into good contact with both of these conical seats. And what that allows it to do is to have two degrees of rotational freedom like that. And that has a relatively low stiffness because the tilting force you know, on the o-ring is a very short lever arm go into the o-ring and then you have a very long one going back to the motor so it's able to very easily move the move the o-ring out of the way and be compliant in those two rotary degrees of freedom but as far as pushing in and out like this that actually ends up being very stiff and in fact it's in that direction you know far stiffer than the the o-ring itself and in the other direction it's as stiff as it's preloaded so what this allows us to do basically is realize this super smooth and, and sensitive transfer of motion from the friction drive and put that translation right into the stage while all of the air motion from the bearings moving around and running out and all this, this is all taken up by this flexure and this movable roller that can move around and take that up the pin can move around and get out of the way, all while not influencing 
the stage at all. So that's sort of the concept with the drive side of things. Beyond that, obviously the encoder is mounted right there. It's not an ideal location. There's a good bit of Abbey error as compared to where the tool is gonna be up around here. But there was a lot of space constraint and that's just where it ended up. Uh, the tool post, which is not complete, still need to EDM the flexures into it. It's gonna bolt on right there and your tool is up here. So that's the idea with the Z-axis there. And so this is all wired up. We've got it connected to, you can see here's the encoder. It's all going into the Ioni Pro servo drives, which you can see in their motherboard there. And we've been messing around with this a little bit and we've actually got it, uh, we've got it working right now. So I'll go ahead and connect to the drive. And we'll enable it. So if I go and look at the diagnostics here, we can see the uh, raw position feedback coming back from that thing. And you can see we're sitting inside a pretty tight band of noise. Um, if we turn on the scope here, we can do some some sample moves and sort of see how how good it is. So here we'll uh, step two microns, and there's what that looks like. So we've tuned it a bit and gotten it decently stiff, but there's still some some work to go. So you can see the top top plot there. The uh, set point is in the orange trace, and the actual position is in blue. Uh, there's a little bit of a little bit of lag near the top of the peak. Uh, I guess the position feed forward's a little little high or something. I'm not quite sure on that, um, but it's tracking pretty nicely. And there you can see the the tracking error at the bottom there. So it's decent, but we still don't like that a whole lot and there's some more, more improvements to be made. But you'll notice now, I can't turn that anymore. <laughs> uh, it's, it's quite stiff. Um, but that is basically it uh, as far as the Z-axis goes. Uh, I'll have a video up soon enough on the X-axis once we get all that tubing management nightmare sorted. Uh, got the linear motor installed in it as well and also have a video just a short one in a few minutes um, on the spindle here because this is also all finished and servoing as well so that's the update uh, if anyone has any questions let me know and we'll maybe address it in the next video so thanks for watching